So anyway, there's this movie, and it's about the funniest guy in films. It's not Robin Williams, it's Charlie Chaplin. And there's a film out, it's called Chaplin, and it's the biography of the funniest man to hit the silver screen. The film stars Robert Downey Jr. as Chaplin, and it's directed by Richard Attenborough, who also directed the incredible film, Gandhi. Now, if you live in the following cities, Toronto, Vancouver, Montreal, Calgary, Edmonton, or Ottawa, I'll be watching the Hostess sneak previews on Wednesday, December 30th, for your chance to win a double pass to the premiere in your very own city. And now, the fun stuff. I was watching one of my favorite TV shows last night, Northern Exposure, anybody watch it? Now, any, okay, let me just explain to you why I enjoyed this particular episode so much. There's a guy in this who plays the Jewish doctor, and uh, he's great, <clears throat> and everybody's celebrating Christmas. And he doesn't really know what to do because, obviously, he's not been brought up with the Christian stories. So, for example, everybody's getting Christmas trees, and he doesn't really know how to do them and how to use them, and he, they, he gets explained what the what the significance of them are and then he says all right i'm, I'm just going to go and do it i'm going to actually get a christmas tree put it up in my place and uh, he's going to try and decorate it well he, he doesn't know how to do it so he gets instructions on how now did you know i didn't know this probably it's because of my upbringing but did you know that when you decorate a tree you have to put the lights first yes. yep. very important and then you put the ornaments but you have to put the smallest ornaments on top, and then you work your way down to the biggest on the bottom. Now, who knew that? No. Everyone except me. <laughs> All the Jewish people don't know this, so I watched Northern Exposure, and um, I learned something that I didn't know. And it was also very interesting because they had, a, because there's a big native community in this Alaska village, which, what is it called? What's, do anybody know what the place is called? Sicily. Sicily. Not like you ever watch TV, but Sicily, yeah. There's, they also had the celebration of the raven in this show. Does anybody know about that? Okay, well, I'll tell you that. You, now, you'll learn something. The raven, apparently, is part of the native culture. I don't know if this is true or not, but it sounded pretty accurate by the way that it was written and performed. And the raven, apparently, I'm going to try and remember it. I'm going to not say it exactly the way it was told because I just watched the TV show and I was eating stuff while I was watching. But anyway, it's the raven... Uh, was watching the or the big chief at the time took the ball of light and put it away so what the raven did was he turned himself into a uh, uh, fir pine leaf and he went down the water and a woman drank the water and swallowed the fi the the, um, the needle the, the fir needle she became pregnant she had a baby boy the baby boy grew up and when he was about 10 years old, he turned back into the raven. No, no, no. First, he, he got his dad, or the, which is the chief, I guess, to, to, <laughs> to, to play with the ball of light. So the, the chief gave him the ball of light. He turned back into the raven. He put it up in the sky. And that is why people didn't live in darkness anymore, because of the raven. Thank you. Phew. Now we have a song from Annie Lennox, it's called Little Bird, and I don't think it's about that particular story. We also have the Tragically Hip, and uh, we are going to start things off here now with um, Michael Jackson. This is Dirty Diana, and who joined bands because it was really the only way out of a very, very poverty-stricken life. Bands like Sex Pistols, guys in those bands who really were living on the uh, edge of poverty, had no jobs, really had no future. They got in a band and they became international stars. And they got a pretty good living out of it at the same time. And Axl Rose has struck gold from a, a troubled teen. He has now bought his, um, well, his latest venture into real estate. He has just purchased a $4 million mansion in Malibu. <laughs> it's described as a contemporary med Mediterranean. It has five bedrooms, eight and a half baths, 7,000 square feet, the home sits on a three-acre view. It's got a view of the city on one hand and an ocean on the uh, other hand. It has a, a guest house, a studio, a tennis court for when, you know, Axel wants to do a little sports, put on the whites and hit a ball back and forth. And, um, of course, a pool and a spa. Four million dollars Axel Rose dished out on this home. Here's the latest from Axel Rose on <laughs> much.